All right, just wanted to do a quick video just addressing some problems and issues that I've been seeing for a while with the Brian Dillinger cult. Now, I want to say this first of all, that Brian Dillinger started off really good. Brian Dillinger, uh, in his early days in ministry, started off, uh, he was very calm, had a lot of humbleness, had a lot of meekness to him, was very uh, straightforward, and had a lot of grace for people. But in recent developments that have been going on for the past couple of years, Brian Dillinger has just become very prideful, bitter, angry, and he has attracted the following over the internet of people who are just as bitter and nasty and angry as he is. And you have his followers who will call you lost and devil possessed just for speaking against Brian Dillinger. I mean, there's this guy, uh, there's this uh, lackey of Anderson and accountable KJV who uh, recently called me devil possessed in the comments of Brian's study on devils walking in flesh. Because why? I spoke against Brian Dillinger. You see, here's how cults operate uh, with the cult. Uh, number one thing that all cults believe is that you don't speak against the number, the number one guy. You don't speak against the number one leader. You don't speak against the man of God. Because if you do, oh, that, that's proof you're lost, basically. That's what it comes down to. And the cult of Brian Dillinger, they will call anybody lost. Uh, or maybe not everybody, but most people, I mean myself at least, they've called lost for speaking against Brian Dillinger. Because... And I've said this too, you know, I, I've done lots of videos exposing Steven Anderson and his little group that he runs. And really when you get down to it, Brian Dillinger's little cult that he runs is not any different in terms of their conduct and behavior than Steven Anderson's group. Okay. And, and people say, well, why do you keep talking about Brian Dillinger? Well, because, you know, this kind of stuff has to be called out because Brian Dillinger is uh, getting out of control and his followers are behaving. The kind of fruit that comes from his ministry is these types of, these types of people who just idolized Brian Dillinger, just, just you know, think he can do no wrong apparently. And again, you got this Phil Randon guy who was I was referring to earlier, who uh, has all these little alternate channels that he uses and basically trolls the channels and videos of people who speak against Brian Dillinger, his idol, and also accountable KJV, and calls them lost. Completely disregards the fruit. Completely disregards the person's testimony or any fruit they produce or any kind of you know uh, holiness they display, any kind of uh, uh, just fruit of the spirit they display and calls them lost. Why? Because they spoke against Pope Brian Dillinger. And that's why I've said I compared these guys to the Catholic Church as well because in terms of their conduct, you know, uh, you speak against the Pope in Roman Catholicism, you're speaking against God's man on earth. And Brian Dillinger used to always condemn the IFB for uh, this kind of mentality of don't speak against the man of God. Well, sadly now, Brian Dillinger is displaying that exact same mentality of this kind of don't question the man of God, don't say anything about the man of God, is no different. Brian Dillinger is starting to become the very thing he hates. And he's attracting this this following of people like Phil Randon who just uh, think he can do no wrong or, or respect as a person's, uh, it's insanity. And you got, for example, I mean, how Brian Dillinger conducts himself is not how a bishop or an elder is supposed to do that. First Peter chapter five, verse one to three talks about not ruling over the flock. And, you know, Brian Dillinger does run an internet ministry, but how he treats his followers, he's trying to rule over them. You know, you just can't question the opinion of the Pope. And Phil Randon is just more proof that Brian Dillinger is running a cult. And again, it's no different than Stephen Anderson's group. You got also uh, Mark chapter 10, which talks about, you know, the, the exercising lordship over them and how it's not supposed to be so among Jesus Christ's disciples. And when, you, when you're in a group where if you're afraid to speak against the leader, if you're afraid to speak against the number one guy, that's how you know it's it's a cult, like I said before. And you say, oh, you say that word a lot. Yeah, because, you know, Satan's pretty busy. And, you know, again, I've said Brian Dillinger, I believe he's a safe man. But this kind of arrogancy and also using his age as well. Oh, you know, I'm older than you, so don't speak against me. Um, and they like to rip First Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 out of context, but they forget to read down to verse 19 through 20, which talks about the biblical grounds for rebuking an elder. If they're in sin, any of two or three witnesses. And unrepentant sin, by the way, as well. But he gets on a high horse and says, oh, I'm 46 years old, I'm in my 40s, don't question me, little boy, that kind of stuff. Yeah, no different than the IFB. So I wanted just to address these things of how the Brian Dillinger group is, it started off really good, uh, but now it's just gone off the deep end over the past couple of years. And just this calling people lost for speaking against Brian Dillinger, that's not, I've got, you know, just completely disregarding any fruit, completely disregarding that person's testimony or anything else. Um, it's insane. It's, it's complete wickedness too. So I just want to point that out. Mark and avoid Brian's call. I'll be coming out with more stuff in the future about it uh, because they need to be called out and they need to, Brian needs to really be humbled. That's what it comes down to. And he's brought out a lot of good stuff. I'll say that. 
but uh, the kind of fruit that comes out of it now is pretty bad. So anyway, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.